How's it going guys? We'll be doing the 5.2 Star Wars Troopers lab and we'll start like any other lab. We'll be just going through the document. Now it starts off by saying, in Star Wars, what are clone troopers? Do an internet search to find out and write a sentence to answer the question. Uh, go ahead and do that if, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with Star Wars at all. These down here, spoiler alert, are stormtroopers or clone troopers, sorry, in this example. Um, and then it immediately goes, says, go to this snap project. Uh, this example down here may not make as much sense. When I first saw it, it looked kind of weird. Um, I think this black line is also supposed to be up at the top of here. So they're going to start on the right hand side of the screen and they're going to move. So it says go to the snap project, save it to your account and start a file for you to practice. Duplicate the sprite in the scripts. So there are five clone troopers that move from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen, straight line when the green flag is clear. So like we said, it's right here and we're going to go across the screen there. The starting and ending positions of the sprites are shown. So if you right click, click on uh, Snap Project, you'll see the URL there, and you can go to it. And this is, it starts out with one, it shows you an example, and you should stop right about here, and he does. You can go down to here. At this point, you guys will go up to file and save. Uh, it's not too pertinent for you to do that right now. So I'll just go ahead and continue. So we have our sprite here, we have our stage. We're Probably just keep it all here on the sprite, although you could do it on the stage. And we're actually going to be using, uh, I think I saw a few people maybe just copy, like, duplicate, duplicate, right? And that's, that's um, theoretically would work if you just manually did it all, but we're going to do it programmatically. So there's actually this cool button down here called create a clone of, and then a new clone of, whatever. So this is going to be the basis of how we're going to do it. And it's going to be create a clone of myself. And obviously, if you're doing it from the stage or if you honestly want to do it, you can clone trooper. I'll just do it myself because it's the first option here. So, what we're going to do is when we click, uh, obviously, setting this code, you guys would be right, move to the left. And then we're also going to create a clone of yourself. Now, when you create that clone, in order to control that clone, we want to be using, and this is one way of many, when I start as a clone. So then whenever you start, whenever you clone yourself, it's going to come down here and when I start to clone, and it's actually going to continue here before it goes on here. And we can actually test that to make sure. I highly recommend you fully understanding how everything works. So we'll go to just something easy, like, I don't know, say something. So say, I'm alive. Two seconds. Do it. We should be able to walk through it. Oh, because it's going to get all the way to the end. So we'll actually create the clone at the top. So I highly recommend you guys. We're, we'll be using a lot of these stepping. I want to go through the tools we can use. So now when I click it, I'm alive. It just created a clone of himself. And so we actually see, I click and drag. And if we actually were to create more clones, drag and obviously, okay, just clicked it a bunch. But the more important part was we saw, we can kind of see here, if you drag this all the way to the left, made the green, you'll see actually the first step, I have this little yellow up here, the step, and immediately instead of coming here, it goes down here, it says I'm alive, and now it's going up there. And we can at least see that we, we can maybe do some stuff here that will correspond. So, what we will do is we will now, we're gonna create five of them, right? And we're going to try to position them so they're all down here. So I'll just grab a repeat loop. This could probably be done with a four each loop as well, or four loops, sorry. And we're just going to do it four times. But here, we'll create a clone four times. Obviously, if you do it at this point, it will step off. We're going to create five guys that kind of live here. So we know at least it did create five. Now when they start down here, we want them to have different positions. So just like this, we're gonna go to, honestly, we'll probably just, easier to do and kind of get rid of that. I'm alive, that was more for debug. We wanna go to these positions and just to make sure it works, we'll do it like a static number and then we're gonna go ahead and make a variable for the difference of Y. So we'll just say, or maybe just a little bit more of a difference, 100. 
So we got here and we can see all the clones are actually in this pile here because they all got started here and they're all gliding right now. Is that point? We actually, they're all, all, all four of them right there. So now we'll create a different Y and we're pretty much mostly there. And then we'll go through a few a fun things. We can now we're, to easily do this, to make it, you know, we're gonna make a variable and we'll call this, we just do Y. The y position, any of that kind of stuff. Right? And we will set y to the number we start with, which is 40. So now we can replace both of these with y. Um, once again, this would get everybody to start with So then we also want a y difference. Y diff. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is every time we start as a clone, we wanna recognize that we've made another clone and try to put it further down. So in my head, the first thing that comes to mind is I can kind of keep track of every time this repeat happens. Uh, if you had an I, you could do it, or we can make another variable, clone number. Every good clone has a number, right? That's what they're all called by. So we'll give each clone a number, and then we'll times that number by the difference. So say if we want our difference to be something like, every clone should be about 40 apart, we will do that. And then we'll make our clone number. Clone num. Clone num. Okay. And then we'll originally start our clone off as clone zero. That'll be our original uh, guy here. And then every time before we create a clone, we clone a new number. So, oh. Instead of set, we can actually use this change by. You can also obviously set it by itself, but this thing. So change clone number by one. And then what we're gonna do here down at the Y is instead of setting each clone to Y, like we said, the little bit of math here is we wanna do this Y minus the clone difference times the clone number. And so to break this down once more, it's gonna be our Y position, obviously gonna be 140 if everything else is taken out of the equation, minus the Y difference, so minus 40, and then the clone number. So the first clone is gonna be times one, so it's gonna do nothing, so it's gonna be 140 minus 40 times one, right? That'll be at position 100. And then we'll go and it'll be 140 minus 40 times two, so it'd be minus 80. And so we'll actually see them all kind of trickle down here. Hopefully we did it right, and we'll check that now. Awesome, you see one's missing. I noticed this earlier when I was testing it. I think this is a visual bug, because actually, if you put the, um, if you put the, the tracker on, you can see it actually prints them all off just fine. Two, three, four, five, right? All of them are there. It's uh, kind of staggered, because Low mode but when you go fast one's missing um i'm not quite sure if you guys figure it out uh that's great if not when we're creating i'll obviously see if did it correctly so with that aside this is the basic idea of what we're doing right you can see they're a, a little bit off potentially um but this is the core of what you're really trying to do um obviously if, if you're really if you're noticing this first one might be going a little bit quicker, we, we can fix that here. Um, and if you're more about consistent code, if you actually notice, you could just do this, put this up here, take this out. And since Y diff will be 40, but your clone number is zero, it's actually still gonna be the Y. So now you're using the same lines of code, which is something I constantly try to do. And obviously using uh, you know, different methods and stuff, you could do this. You see these two are exactly the same too. So stuff I was working on earlier was, you know, kind of broadcasting is, uh, you know, March or something. March. And then when I receive March, that's when I tell everyone to do this. And that way you can just broadcast March. I actually originally did this with also doing the go to X and this, but for whatever reason, it doesn't recognize the clone at that point and it just moves the first one. 
So you can see it actually that tells the model march as well. I was fixing it also if you are bugged by the fact that they oh good no they actually all start the same way this way. So th this would fix what we saw earlier where they're all kind of staggered when we slowed it down by doing this we're all getting them to march at the same time. Um, and this is kind of the whole project here. If you guys do fix that bug or it, it might actually be working on some people's screens, that's okay. Um, for whatever reason, couldn't do mine. He's actually here for whatever reason he's getting moved. I think it's because maybe the code's moving too quick. If I actually added a weight in between each of these, so we say something like second, might end up with a bolt here. <laughs> and they're all marching at different orders. Now you see, even without that, it did all display correctly. So it is definitely a display bug. And then to even stop this, if you're really, really avid about, you know, having really, um, you know, solid code that works in any environment, any computer, we can actually make another variable called March orders. And we'll say, uh, or, or is marching, is marching. And by doing this, I'm gonna notify when we're marching. And I'm gonna tell everyone to wait until we are marching. Cause that's, you know, we can wait until specifically, wait until, and we'll say is marching. We will set, and uh, this, none of this is mandatory. This is just for anyone that wants to, you know, do a little bit of extra credit. Um, set is marching to false, because obviously at the beginning of the code, we're not gonna be marching. So we will find the set is marching, and there's this cool operator that just straight up and then once we've created all of them so after we've done all the waiting one second so we've created all the clones we can come down here and set is merging we actually want to broadcast this first that we're queuing it up we're ready we're waiting until it's marching so we'll broadcast march and we'll broadcast march on all of these and the last thing that will go off is is marching is set to true and here we go. See, they're creating, they're waiting for is marching, and they all march together. So obviously the waiting one second is kind of uh, a little bit extra time. You could probably do something like, I wonder if 0.1 seconds would be enough to, yeah, so 0.1 seconds was enough. We got them all marching. We got them marching at the same time. If the one's missing, I, I understand if you don't want to go through the extra struggle. Uh, thanks for watching through if you did, uh, if you're not doing that. Um, and I hope you guys have fun with this one. See ya.